Welcome back, folks. So we got a lot of things to talk about and do today. So first things first, um, set this up. We're going to be working on the old Silverado a little bit. She's been sitting here on a battery tender in the shop for a while now, and uh, she's looking pretty good. I actually waxed her up and washed her, although she's all dusty again. But uh, this truck looks so pretty, but she's got some issues. For those who don't know, um, this truck actually caught on fire last summer. Um, I was driving, towing my camper to North Carolina in middle Pennsylvania, which is about the halfway point of my trip. Uh, unfortunately, a defective whoa, transmission line fitting fell off the truck or, or let the line fall off the truck and it shot transmission fluid into the exhaust. It caught on fire. I had a legitimate side of the road vehicle fire going on. Fortunately, I had three fire extinguishers, only two of which worked separate discussion entirely. I was able to get the fire put out and I was able to save the truck. I had it towed to a shop, a local shop that I basically just stumbled upon because they were the ones who happened to do the tow call for me. And <laughs> they were, those guys were freaking awesome. It's called Robinson's Auto Repair in uh, Chambersburg, PA. Massive shout out. Um, super nice guys. Eric, uh, the mechanic there, I never forget. He hooked me up. Help me fix it. Let me work side by side with them. Anyway, truck lived. Had a couple things I had to sort out after that, but it's been fine since the fire. However, I made one mistake. Made one mistake that whole process. In my being hurried, trying to fix this truck, get back on the road, make it to where I was going, I apparently overfilled the transmission fluid a little bit. So it was about a liter and a half too high. I only So quart and change. So not crazy, crazy high. Maybe like quart and a half high. <laughs> But uh, I'm getting very, very rarely, I'm getting this situation where it almost feels like it's stuck in second gear when I launch and then it shifts back into first, like coming from an intersection or something like that. It happened to me months and months ago. I didn't really think much of it because like I didn't know if the tires slipped or whatever was going on. I also had the rear end stuff going on. And then it did it again twice on my commute home when I was drove it to work the one day. So I parked it here until I could you know, look at what was wrong. That's when I discovered the transmission fluid was high. Not sure if that's actually the cause, but the fluid color is good. Um, the fluid, you know, looks fine. So I don't really think this isn't the best image of it, but you can see how red that is. Um, so I don't really think I screwed up the transmission, but not for nothing. I mean, it was drained of fluid, you know, when that fire happened and I coasted to the side of the road, but you know, I mean, the engine's still running, things are still spinning. So who knows? We're gonna we're gonna do some good uh, diagnostic. I drain the fluid. Um, I'm gonna drive it around, get it nice and warm, check the levels again, add some fluid if I need to. Really, just thoroughly make sure the transmission fluid is exactly where it should be, and I'll go from there. Um, so keep my fingers crossed on that one. Number two, um, it has an evap leak. It's thrown the small evap leak code, the big evap leak code. But I've smoked this thing twice from the gas cap, and I have not found a leak. So today I want to do the smoke test from the evap line, which I probably should have done in the first place. But we'll just check everything again, see if I can see any smoke. I check the purge valve. I check the vent valve. I have a computer with my tuner. I can turn them on and off. They both worked. I even took them off the truck and, like, you know, blew into them. And when it was closed, it was closed. When it was open, it was open. And, again, I can hear them clicking on the truck, so I know the truck's wiring is good. So kind of strange like i don't know maybe the fuel pressure sensor is bad um so it just thinks it's not you know it doesn't know when to open them or close them correctly i haven't looked into that yet so that'll be my next thing all right everyone so i am tracking a few different um a few different things here on torque pro just to kind of see if i can get an idea of what's going on and for the evap stuff and then we're just driving this thing around for the transmission and we'll go from there and see if it does any weird shifting hopefully it doesn't i'm going to take this thing for a nice little city loop and then we'll get on the state routes and just see what it does through the titan fuel cap message which tells me it's still whatever was going on with the evap is still going on um I, I actually think my buddy's scanner at the shop will be able to measure the fuel tank pressure sensor so i'm going to try to get that scanner when i get back but for right now we're just testing out the transmission everything's been fine so far i haven't really beat on it yet but uh i don't know if it's placebo or the fact that the battery was disconnected at one point but it does seem to shift smoother 
Uh, trans temps at 161. All right, folks. I'm at a buck 77 trans temp. I just messed with the fluid level such that we are right on the bottom of the hot line, which I would say is right where we want to be. Look at that. I don't know if you can tell, but it's right at the bottom of the hot mark. And I figure 160 to 180 should be at the bottom of it. And then hot, you know, 210, 215 would be at the top of the hot mark. And then that way you're not overfilled. See? But I mean, that's pretty darn red. It's got 15, 20,000 miles on it. That's beautiful fluid. So I don't think anything's wrong with the transmission. But uh, just got to kind of work the process. I wanted to start with the fluid level because that was the first thing that I noticed. So I always like working the problem from the first known defect on. I don't really see any reason to uh, work a problem, you know, other do other diagnostic when you have something that you know is incorrect. Now that we're on to the next issue, we're going to try to look at the fuel pressure, fuel tank pressure sensor and start diagnosing this EVAP and then we'll smoke it if I think we need to. So if you look, it thinks it's detecting a large leak. So something is very unhappy in this system. And then it's actually only the large leak code. Usually it'll throw the small leak code as well. I've got the redneck smoke tester. Unfortunately, the smoke tester itself smokes a lot. But we got a pretty good seal here. We're gonna check, but we're going into the EVAP line and we'll just see what happens. Oh, I see smoke down there. Oh, that's good. Okay, let me go look and see where that's coming from. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It's that freaking EVAP line. So that stainless braided line right there, that is the EVAP line and it was part of the fire. And that's why it's leaking. Well, we can fix that, folks. I think I got one of those in the stock. I am going to be checking a few things. One, I want to make sure that it shifts correctly for my entire commute back and forth to work. And then we are also looking at the EVAP system monitor on Torque Pro. We want to make sure that it eventually passes EVAP. All right, so we've been driving about 40, 50 miles since I drained the transmission fluid and fixed the EVAP. I'm gonna drive it a whole 500 to 1,000 miles, so we'll see what uh, what turns out, how it turns out um, once we do that. So I forgot to plug the O2 sensor back in, as you can tell based on that code. Oopsie. So the weird thing is it hasn't showed up for like 200 miles. Um, and it finally showed up. So anyway, I'm gonna have to restart this whole process over again because I think I need to clear that code. I don't think it'll go away on its own. Oh well. So it's actually been a few months now since I made a lot of this video and I can happily report that both the EVAP is off and the transmission has been shifting beautifully. So we don't seem to have any issues with either. Something I've been meaning to do forever is throw this dang new air cabin air filter in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. First steps first, you gotta remove the three fasteners. I only have two because I left the one out. One of the fasteners is like under there and it's an absolute pain in the ass to get to. We're gonna take these two off quick. Pull this guy out of the way. Get all at me, there we go. And I think, so those are seven millimeters, I think the Screw for this guy is a six. It is not, it is also a seven. Well, that's, that's actually good. For some reason I thought it was different. Okay. That's off, you pull this cover down. Holy crap, look how nasty that is. Can I actually be honest with you? I thought this would be a waste of my time, but evidently it's not, so that's cool. Um, now we're gonna pull these down. It's actually two separate filters, I believe, if I remember correctly that it can fit. Wow, this thing's nasty. No, I'm glad I did this. That is only one filter. Some of the kits have two separate ones. That's pretty dirty. Well, that's good. Glad I'm replacing it. Always kind of a pain to get back in. It's a weird angle. You gotta kind of deform it a little bit, unfortunately. 
What do you know? It's in there. Take your panel. I'm gonna clean this off first, but you'll just stick that back on. Like so. You're good to go. Send it on. I think it is actually a seven mil. And if it's not I'm a pain in the butt. Is it not too? Guys, so the codes are still not, or the monitor, the emissions monitor still haven't readied up. <clears throat> um, so I'll just keep driving it and see what happens. I, I think they'll be okay. So we'll see. But I got another thing that I gotta confess. I did a big oopsie. And I didn't, this is something I never knew and I swear that I've done before. Well, I went to clean the dash with some isopropyl alcohol to put a little piece of Velcro down for my radar detector. Or redo it, I should say, because I used to have a piece on there and it came off. And it apparently totally messes up the paint on these dashes. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a total light spot. And I, I literally did, that was like one wipe. I stopped immediately after I realized what was going on, but it was way too late. I never in my life would have thought IPA, like I spread blog all would cause that. I've used that purposefully on everything because it's strong enough to make it clean, but not such a strong cleaner that it messes up surfaces. Well, I learned a lesson. So luckily they make dash paint. Also luckily this needs to be painted anyway. That's needed to be painted for, since I bought the dang thing. So I'll go ahead and use this as an opportunity to clean it up a little bit, but it's just like very surprised. Welcome back party people. Today we're gonna to be doing some electrical diagnostic. We've had a parasitic draw for the longest time now, and I've just been putting it on a battery tender instead of addressing the parasitic draw. Listen, I've been busy, all right? So anyway, today we're gonna to attempt to find it. Full disclosure, yesterday I used an induction, uh, inductive style ammeter. Ammeter? I think that's the right name. And tried to find it and well, Take a look at what I kind of found out, which is very interesting, and maybe somebody in the comments will know what's going on here. All right, guys, so check this out. We're at about zero. I'm going to put it just near this power wire. 0.21. Put it near the ground. 0.21. Put it near the positive over here. 0.37. It, 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 like, there's like stray current. I don't understand why. The weird thing is these, these Silverados have this inductor right here. It's for the fans, I believe. Don't ask me how the heck it works. I haven't looked that up yet. But even if we go toward the alternator wire, 0.62. Go around it, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Go around this, 0 0.38, 0 0.37. Go around the negative, 0.1.22. Um, keep in mind these are high because I just closed the door on the truck, but the point is I'm getting all weird currents in different places and I have waited 5-10 minutes for all the computers to shut down and it basically stabilizes at 0.37. But what I want to do is not trust this meter and break the uh, circuit open and use a multimeter. So stay tuned. Go ahead and we'll hook our multimeter up. Okay. Ah. I'm gonna need two hands, guys. Give me a minute. All right, so you can see that right now we have a little over an amp. So it's about the same as what we saw on the other meter. Um, we saw 1.2. And that's just because the computer's on. Okay, so that just dropped. So now we're at 111 milliamps, 40 milliamps, 50 milliamps, 40 milliamps. So that's not crazy high. All right, guys, so I hope you get a good laugh out of this one. As you can see in this time lapse, we are at a very reasonable 30 to 40 milliamp draw, and I let this sit for a good long time. And long story short, I realized I just, in fact, need a new battery. So in true engineering fashion, engineering gone wrong fashion, I managed to completely overcomplicate the problem and not just properly check the battery first. Now, in my defense, probably eight months ago, I did do a load test, and it was a little low, but did pass. So I really didn't think the battery had lost that much juice uh, in this, you know, recent amount of time, but evidently it did. You know, sometimes batteries are pretty good shape until they're not, and then they're just dead. So that seems to be what happened here. All right, guys, so you can see, installed a nice brandy new Red Top Optimal battery. Kind of interesting how the 
posts are so close together. But anyway, that is all good. So the truck actually starts. And we'll head over here. You can see that the dash paint is pretty well touched up. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough for, uh, you know, compared to what it looked like before. I mean, frankly, it was all bad there too, so. All right, guys, I am running out of daylight and we have gone over everything we need to in this video. So with that being said, as always, thanks for watching. God bless America and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.